Welcome to Think Tech. We are raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kuma Kahui Theater. And we are coming to you from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kuma Kahui Theater, I might add. I, this is the second part of a series of Oahu Fringe. We've got four guests for you today, so we're going to go through these as quickly and as thoroughly as possible because these are some awesome acts. We really want to make sure that you come down to Chinatown and see this weekend. Joining me right now is Shinru, Shinru Young and Bonnie Kim. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you have, you're not together, you're from very, very different groups, and I want to make sure that we talk about both of them. Shinru, we'll start with you because you're a returning guest. You were here two years ago. Yeah, it's great to be back. Yeah, it's good to have you back. You were fairly new to the island, and you were... I had just gotten here. Yeah, you yeah. had just gotten here, and you were um, creating pieces that had to do with the uh, water. Yes. You're really focusing on water here. And you completed that work. Have mm -hmm. you stayed on the island throughout? Uh, I've traveled a lot. I, at the time, I didn't know if I was going to stay. And I'm still here two years later. So it's really awesome to kind of come full circle. Um, but yeah, I'm still here. We completed the water project, Flood Turn the Tide. And it's cool to be back at Fringe two years later. Yeah. And it was, yeah, it was for Fringe, it was for Fringe two years yeah. ago when you were mm -hmm. here. And I got to see one of your performances. It makes me very excited to see what you're doing today. Thin Skin is mm -hmm. the name of your piece mm -hmm. um, that you're doing this weekend. The, just to give people a little bit of background on, on um, Flood Turn the Tide, that we, the piece that I saw was a group of amazingly talented dancers who gathered at the Blaisdell where there is a natural spring and then we as the audience members followed the dancers as they improvised their way above this the the water that flows through Oahu out to the harbor just outside the uh, Ward Warehouse. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I went straight to the harbor. That was yeah. an amazing experience. That Congratulations on creating Thank that you. for all of us. Yeah, that was just the first in a series of four site-specific pieces, actually. So it was uh, experiment after experiment. And uh, yeah, now for Fringe Festival, we're doing um, another piece that's I also consider site-specific. <laughs> So it's very different. It's not about water, uh, <laughs> but it's actually like a personal narrative um, that I'm sharing. And I'm a very private person, so it's very bizarre to put myself out there. Uh, but the piece is about, it's about vulnerability, and it's going a very different direction, like actually showing different sides of ourselves and what we're afraid to share. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you say site-specific, how is the, the sites in Chinatown related to the story? Uh, well, it's built in uh, my partner, uh, my cre creative partner, Spencer Agustin, is in his studio, Studio 114, so it's his art studio, and uh, we've, he's a sculptor and a scenographer, and so he's built an installation within the, within the space that I interact with and I dance with, so it's site-specific in that I designed the piece for a small intimate space because it's an intimate piece. Oh, okay, gotcha. Mm -hmm. So how many audience members will fit in? Uh, per show, only about 15. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that that's why intimate. we have six shows, is to try to get as many people in as possible. Yeah. What an interesting journey to choose to take. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you I know? think everything's a challenge, right? Like, water was a completely different. We had to go outdoors. We had to be near the water. And now this is a totally different piece, you know, and it's always it's a totally new challenge. This time it's actually about myself, and I, I don't usually share that. So it's a, a totally different challenge. I suppose when someone writes or, uh, and or performs a song or a piece of poetry or writes a play there's mm -hmm. the, or uh, a, a, a puppet piece, there ourselves, we ourselves are always in it. Mm -hmm. um, this for the purpose of revealing vulnerability, becoming vulnerable is uh, kudos to you. I'm really anxious to see it. <laughs> Thanks. So tell me when and where I can see it. Uh, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, two shows per night, 7.30 and 9 o'clock. And I would recommend getting tickets ahead of time because if we have to turn you away, you might miss another show. So yeah. Gotcha. OK, Only and we can get those tickets online if we online. go to Oahu yeah. Fringe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. I'm, I'm excited. Is it just you dancing, or are there other uh, That's performers? a good question. It's me and Spencer, so it's very raw. We reveal the whole process as well. So you see us changing the scene, you see us interacting. So it's me dancing and him um, being kind of my witness and co-collaborator. You see him doing his scenography live as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
And the music behind it, is this original work? Uh, I designed the soundscape, yeah. It's uh, a lot of dialogue. It's me interviewing people. Um, it's interviewing my mother. You hear my birth story. You hear all kinds of things, um, as well as music. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm very anxious to see that. Yeah. Thank you. Man, come. You come up with the stuff, girl. <laughs> 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 OK, Bonnie has brought a friend. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> Ta -da. Oh. <laughs> this is this is a first on my show. Last week we had a baby. What? Now we have this tiny little man. Look at that. It's, what? it's one of my uh, puppets in the show that I'm doing at the Wild Fringe Festival. Uh, the title, The Boy Who Loved Puppets. It's the title of my show. And um, the story is actually inspired by a true story of an artist in Taiwan. And I started working on this project about two years ago. So the puppets, so this is a Czech marionette uh, style puppet. And I made uh, puppets in the stage in Prague two years ago. And then I did a bunch of research in Taiwan with the artists that I was working with. And <laughs> now it turned it into a longer show. At first it was 10 minute piece. And then I wanted to make it into a longer um, show. So it came out to about 35 minute now. So that's what I'll be presenting this Friday. And the, the story, um, the story itself, w where did that, how does, is that a, how did you come to that story? Oh, so the artist, let's see if I can see. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a puppet artist uh, uh, from Taipei, Taiwan. And actually, I met him here in Hawaii three years ago when he came with his company, uh, Taiwan Puppet uh, Theater from Taipei, and they had an exhibit at East, Hawaii, uh, East uh, West Center. Um, and they also perform it. I was so fascinated with the traditional Chinese Taiwanese hand puppets. So I contacted the director, and I went there the fall, that fall uh, to do a, sort of an internship with them. So I kind of follow, shadow the theater everywhere they went. I went, I worked backstage, and I just went to all the shows, you know. Um, and then I got to know the artist. Uh, his name is, um, now he changed his name. So his current name is Yong Ting Lai. And um, I did a lot of interviews. So kind of a similar process, I guess, uh, interview process and um, personal story. But it's not my personal story, but there are a lot actually I see myself in the story. So in some way, I, I feel like it's sort of autobiographical in some way. Oh. Yeah. yeah, anyway. <laughs> well, and every artist has to find themselves in the story somehow yeah. in order to be a part of it. Yeah. So you were working with a, um, a, a Taiwanese, let me make sure that I, I get this yeah. because you're using Czech Yes, yeah, so the style of the this pup, uh, puppet is Czech style, Czech uh, marionettes. But it's a miniature size. So what I'm doing is called toy theater or family theater which was really popular in Europe in 19th century, especially Germany and Czech uh, Republic. Um, so the regular Czech marionettes are much bigger in terms of the scale, oh, okay. but these are a more miniature version of it um, for toy theater. Um, so yeah, so the, and then in my show, it's a multimedia show. <laughs> it's a toy theater solo pu puppet show. And in my show, there is also a projection of the Taiwanese artist uh, performing and like sort of his process within my show as a storytelling. Oh. So you get to see two different traditional puppets in there, yeah. like the Czech uh, as well as the Chinese, Taiwanese hand puppets. Yeah. How, how do they differ? Or are we looking at a picture of one of them? No, this is one of the yeah, that's, Czech uh, style. Yeah, so the whole, the puppets are Czech style. I don't think I have the video footage of the uh, image here, but I have a project video projection. It's like a miniature movie you get to see <laughs> within that small stage. So anyway, so yeah, it's sort of multimedia. Yeah, no kidding. How many performers are there? Just me, solo show, Just but I have five more. characters. So I have to play five different characters. And two hands. <laughs> and two hands, exactly. <laughs> Big challenge for a puppeteer. Yeah, no kidding. And this, well, this is also because they're so tiny. This is very intimate work. Yes. Are, what yes. are you limiting your audiences to? Um, I, I'm not having any limits. I mean, I don't know how many the, because my show will be at the Mark's Garage, okay. so I don't know what the capacity is there. But audience should be able to see it if I make sure the seating is done right. Okay. Uh, I but will it is wear a very my driving glasses. 
<laughs> but it is a small and intimate show, so it's kind of a um, not a common puppet show that you get to see, especially in Hawaii. So I think that will offer audience new experience. D yeah, no kidding, show. right? What what time when? Oh, when Friday I? this Friday, mm -hmm. March Garage at six o'clock. At six o'clock, and yeah. tickets can also be purchased in advance. Yes for your show. Have you been involved in the Fringe Festival before? Yes, this is my third time. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, okay. I've done sorry, first, I'm third, and fifth. This is so every other year. Have these shows gone elsewhere? Uh, so yeah, this show actually I did touring in Europe uh, and Asia last year, last year. So summer and fall I was touring. Oh, Mostly wow. schools. So I've done a lot of school shows in Germany for elementary and middle school kids. And in Korea was family centers, libraries, um, and I also did a house uh, performance in Bangkok for a group of international school students and faculty members. So that was really fun. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Do you make all Yes, these? all these are, yeah, all, I make all my puppets. So yeah, this is hand carved out of wood, basswood. And I made all the costumes, paint, everything. <laughs> that is really fascinating. And I feel like puppetry is gaining a resurgence. Oh yeah, totally. Over the Everywhere. holidays, I saw a puppet show in LA that was, yeah. oh, I can't remember the name. But they were like Barbie doll size uh, yeah. that just people behind a counter mm -hmm. and you get to the point where you, you don't look at the people right. who are manipulating at yeah. all. You're just looking at those puppets wondering what they're going to do next. Yeah, I think the puppetry, <laughs> the field of puppetry has become really broadened with the technology because a lot of people doing um, like stop motion now consider it as part of the puppetry um. and they are doing a lot of live green screen projected puppetry shows in theaters, you know, live shows. Yeah, and yeah so there are a lot of new styles of puppetry, I think, nowadays. Awesome. Popular everywhere around the world. I mean, everywhere I go, I see a lot more puppetry. I'm glad of it. It's, it's an art form that has just limitless boundaries yeah. that can be explored. Yeah. Um, so we just have about a minute left in this segment. Thank you both very much for Thank being you. here. I know you know each other. Yes, yes we do. Yeah. Have you ever talked about collaborating? Uh, we haven't. But I would love to. I, actually, I saw her show. She saw the show. Thin Skin. Because so yeah. we put it on in November. Yeah. And then Misa from Fringe saw it and invited us and to said, Come back restage and do it. it. But yeah, Bonnie came. Yeah, it was really. So. I mean, I recommend people to go see it. And get your tickets yeah. early because it's a small, small space. Yeah. And um, okay. very personal, and I was, yeah, it was really fascinating. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Oh, <laughs> maybe, so maybe we will collaborate. I don't know. I haven't yeah, seen her work yet, but I think we could. This guy looks really limber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, he's That's pretty bendy. Yeah, he can do all sorts of stuff. <laughs> thank you both very Thanks much for being here. Thank you. Here. And yes. we will be seeing you this weekend. It's a happening weekend <laughs> in Chinatown. We're going to take a short break. We're going to be back with two totally new guests for you, so please stay with us. Hello, ha! Huh? How you doing? It's me, Angus McTech, wishing you to welcome and join us to see us on Hibachi Talk on Think Tech Hawaii. Join my co-hosts, Gordo the Tech Czar and Andrew the Security Guy every Friday from 1300 to 1345. We look forward to seeing you. We'll talk tech and we'll have some wee bit of fun. And remember, let your wing gang free wherever you be. Hello, ha! Huh? I'm Jay Fidel, and with Ray Starling, I host Hawaii, the state of clean energy, 4 o'clock every Wednesday. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, making discovery of what's going on in energy in this community. Ray, what do you think? We've got a great group of shows coming up, uh, finishing out this year and starting next year. Uh, Dean Nishida has been with us today. Uh, he's the new consumer advocate, and uh, he has told us a lot, but he's got a lot more to tell. So we're going to have him back and others like him in future shows. And Dean, how much of that do you agree with? There's a lot to be said, and I'm interested in seeing some of your other shows. Okay, we'll be back 4 o'clock every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow. Eat yeah. the rainbow. And if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. Hi, I'm Marian Sasaki, and I'm speaking to all engaged citizens. I think everybody should know that there's going to be a big women's march on Washington on January 21st, and there will also be independent marches in each city around the country. And the purpose is for our voices to be heard and to take a stand on reproductive rights and other rights which may be eroded under this 
presidency. It's not a protest march, however, it's a positive march. So look for a, your local march and join in. Every hand counts. Hi, I'm Stan Energy Man, and I want you to be here every Friday. Noon, thinktechhawaii.com. Watch the show. Be there. I pity the fool who ain't. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock, and we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners, and I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. My name is Ray Tsuchiyama. I was raised in Kalihi Palama, a proud graduate of Farrington High School. And I want to say that Think Tech is a great program, brings people together, and creates a really great community of concerned citizens for the future of Hawaii. Hi, we are back, and we are live. This is Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. If you would ever like to join us in the downtown studio for one of the shows, you may do that. Just email Jay, that's J A Y, at thinktechhawaii.com, and he will hook you up. We would love to see you here. If you ever have any ideas for people you'd like to see on the show, or you yourself feel like you're an artist with a story to tell, let me know. You can find me on Twitter at It's All About Donna, because it is. Okay, my two <laughs> new guests who are both involved in Fringe, Rory Franzen with yes. Think Fest Improv. Think Fest Improv, that's right. And Steph Mariano of Steph Mariano Folk Music. Yes, Mariani. But Mariani. Yes. Oh, very close. It's okay. It's a tough one. If I have four people on the show and I only screw up one name, we're good. Trust me. Okay, let's, so let's start with you, Rory, if Absolutely. we may. Tell us about Think Fest Improv. Well, Think Fest Improv is a local improv troupe that has been going for about five years now. Um, we've been in Fringe Festival a couple of times now, um, and we always have such a good time that we are always down to come back. Um, but what we do is we take a suggestion from the audience, and we use that suggestion to do our entire show off of. Um, we'll, sometimes we'll take a bunch of suggestions, sometimes we'll just take the one. I think this year what we're planning on doing is doing a long-form piece, which long-form improv is more like a, a one-act play, where it's one suggestion, or multiple suggestions to tell one story. And then we'll be doing short form improv where we're getting a bunch of suggestions and using that for fast gamey scenes that are really fun and kind of hit with a high amount of comedy. Yeah, very cool. And you, Think Fest Improv has been around for five years. Is five it mostly years. the same ensemble of people? No, we actually, um, we're a long running troupe. So we've had people that have come on gone on to bigger and better things. Um, mostly they've gone on to Chicago or on with their careers, um, left the island. Um, that's really the only way to get out of Think Fast is to leave <laughs> the island. Um, but we have uh, a couple of them have had babies, things like that. But we keep the lights on for them, so we've had people that have left the team and then come back to the team so that they still have a place to play. Oh. So that's the hardest thing with improv is that you get in with one troupe, you play with them, something comes up in life and you can't do improv anymore and then you don't get a chance to come back to it. So we have a place for everybody to come back to, to come and keep back. playing. And how often do you, that's awesome, by the way, Thank you. how, how often so. do you get together? You knew you had the Fringe Festival coming up. Mm -hmm. Did you have extra rehearsals because of that, or do you get together on a regular basis? Oh, anyway? we get, to re get together on a regular basis. We rehearse once to twice a week, all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, I personally, I teach classes on, Tuesdays, rehearse on Wednesdays, um, teach classes on Thursdays, and then we have shows on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, but other members of the team are on multiple teams within our own group. So some of them are rehearsing two and three times a week. Oh, wow. So I, I get a light schedule. <laughs> you must kind of like what you do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and where do you perform around town? Other than the Fringe Festival, the, you, you're well, normally we, performing we, around town. We perform at On King on a regular basis. Okay. Um, we also perform at Jazz Minds in Honolulu. And then we do pick up shows um, at any place that will have a stage and lights and can sit people. So, <laughs> I mean, if you, if you could get people in here, I'd do a show right now. <laughs> Don't tempt Jay Fidel is in the booth right now. Don't tempt him. <laughs> um, so w w when and where for your uh, shows We're at, at On King on Saturday 
Uh, doors open at 5.30. Doors open at 5.30, and your show is a little longer, huh? Yeah, we have a whole hour-long set. Okay. So we will be doing uh, multiple versions of what we do, because uh, Think Pass Improv does all kinds of improv, so we took a longer chunk of time this week or this year so that we could do both styles um, and give a good view of what improv can be. That's nice. Yeah. That's nice. People get a little taste of, of both. A, a lot of people, what people know of improv is um, Who's line Whose Line Is It Live? Anyway and Saturday Night Live. Yeah, and yeah. Saturday Night Live is completely scripted, but the improv long form that we do is what uh, sketch writers use to come up with their bit. Because you don't just get to sit down and write funny stuff. You have to act it out yeah. and make it, make it funny. You work together. Yeah. So you have, um, <clears throat> how, how many people are actually going to be involved in the show on Friday 13. night? Thirteen. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, it'll be a big, a, good, a big good number. Size group of people. Okay, and correct me if I'm wrong, I forgot to ask um, the other two ladies, uh, the, just because we want to make sure that people come into Chinatown and take advantage of the festival. There are all these different places to go. You, you want to get your tickets in advance, you want to keep an eye on your schedule, but some of these people, there are places to get food and drink. Does An King have a bar that's they open have, in there? They have a donation bar at On King. Okay. Um, and I believe that will be open for the Fringe Festival. So there's that, as well as other places. You Absolutely. can easily, I mean, any of these days, yeah. find plenty of places to eat and yeah, drink. You can totally live in stuff. Chinatown. So. <laughs> you, I used to, and yeah. I miss it. You can live in Chinatown. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Absolutely, thank we're, you. Now we're going to talk with Steph Mariano. Um, let's hear about, you are a folk singer. Yes. And you have been, what, what makes a folk singer? Did you grow up really loving Joni Mitchell? Um, actually, my mother is a folk singer-songwriter from the oh. 70s, and Joni Mitchell is indeed one of her big um, people that inspired her. And so that's what I grew up on. And so it, Northern California. Okay. And so it's all that kind of Northern California vibe. Um, but yeah, I grew up around it. Wow. You know who... Um, I, I really enjoy folk singers, and it's not often you hear someone new. I think the most recent folk singer yeah. that um, made me want to run out and buy her music was Michelle Schacht. Mm. Do you know Michelle Schacht? Um, it sounds familiar. Ooh, yeah, you might have to share that with me. Check out, check out <laughs> yeah. I, Show me uh, some good stuff. I, I'm down. <laughs> I enjoy music that tells a story. Yes. Do you write your own music? I do. I do. Oh, that's I write very all personal music. work. Yes. We have a lot of personal stuff going on, and improv is, by its very nature, coming out of you. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't hide when you do that kind of work. I applaud all of you for the vulnerability within your work. Um, so you have, is it just you singing <clears throat> on your own? So I'm singing, and then I have a whole band of boys that back me up. That's how I like to roll. Yes. That's nice. Yes. Okay. Yes, and they're, they're <laughs> fabulous, and they, they support me so well. So it's ultimately it all is focusing around the lyrics and vocal, um, but they, they nicely accompany me, and I play guitar as well. Awesome. Yeah. And how long have you been doing this? Um, I would say my whole life, but I was really shy growing up because my mom's an entertainer. So I actually have to force myself to go into the public eye and perform. It's not something that comes natural for me, but because I write, I feel compelled to get it out. Oh. And that's what drives me. So I have to, like I was talking to him about, he has improv classes. I'm like, well, maybe you can help me to be a better storyteller yeah. in between songs. And you know, something I'm always working on because it's not something that I came out of the womb doing. And I think I, was, I kind of fell into my mother's shadow a little bit mm. and because she's so she has a very dynamic personality and booming alto voice so a little bit different than me um, so I uh, yeah <laughs> okay well and I would love it if we had collaborations that happen here he can help you in yeah that, the collaborations is what it's all about and Honolulu is is ripe for yeah. those yeah I meet people all the time that I can collaborate with and beautiful things come out of it and I think the Fringe Festival brings people together. That's one of the coolest things about it. So. That, is, that is a very cool thing. And it's, it's all of, I think all of performing on some level is about trusting yourself. Yeah. yeah. And 
the more people you get to know, the more people you have in this, your circle, the more your boundaries expand because you have other people that you get to trust. That's true, well. and you get to watch other people get naked in public and be vulnerable. <laughs> right, right. I believe we do have someone in the festival actually getting naked. Oh, really? When? Yeah, <laughs> um, what time? You get on the kidding. website. Everyone go, she, she, maybe she in room. <laughs> oh, okay. We're going to see her thin skin. Okay. Um, uh, cool. Yeah, if you look at I was looking at the website and I thought, oh, there's a, there's another act that I saw in there. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I thought, oh, okay. That fringe festivals are so cool because they can go there. They they know no yeah. bounds and I, and I feel like I want to say it was my first year in the fringe festival and I had no idea what I was getting into. Um, and the act that came on right after me was. Uh, I want to say they were pole dancers of some kind, um, but it was like a seven-year-old woman doing like a, a pole dance, and she was amazing. Like I, was, I watched it, and That's I was like, really I can't cool. believe that this That's is something really cool. I'm watching. Um, <laughs> but it's totally worth all of the money I spent to be here. Like it's really awesome. So it's wow. really cool. That's like cool. And if she had been bad. It wouldn't have mattered. But it would have, uh, the fact that she feels like she can do that and yeah. she wants to do it and she has an outlet for it, I think, is amazing. Because we're, I mean, we're, you get nervous, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's hard. Yeah, it is. And the beauty of fringe festivals is that you don't have to have your uh, a home theater, a, 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 a place where you normally perform. You don't even have to have your own built in audience. You yeah. just go and you hit it and get it. And yeah. People get to come in and see it's, it's what's really, going on here. It's really nice that most of the time, at least with improv, um, I have to explain to people, A, no, it's really an art form. B, this is what the art form is. Mm -hmm. And C, this is why you should see it. And Fringe Festival kind of takes care of the all of that. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's cool. I hope everyone will come down for the Fringe Festival. You are, did you say your day is in time? Um, on King at 7.30 on Friday. And then On King again at 10.30. We're wrapping it up. Um, at On King. At, on, this, on Friday. On Saturday. On Saturday. Excuse You're me. Up the at 10.30. Yes, right. yes. Okay, so could you play me out, please? I've got some. Uh, gonna you thank want me everyone. To could you play just a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Do we need to move, move her microphone? So if you want to hand me my guitar. Oh, we got 30 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and I would like to thank everyone who is here for the show today. I would like to thank Rich Prapus, who is our floor manager, who has had his work cut out for him today. Thank you very much, Rich. I would like to thank the studio overlord, Zuri Bender, who is in my ear, helping to make all of this happen. Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of it together. And you, thank you for watching the show. And we really hope to see you at the Fringe Festival this weekend. Beautiful friend of mine, if you could see what I see, please keep that sweet child inside you, warm and free hand. If you stay, go die, be by your side. If you stay, go, it'll be home. Right.